Hello, I'm Wayne from TalkCast. So we're going to have a look at a question that is always cropping up in our forums about adding a turbo to a car or increasing the capacity of a turbo on an existing turbocharged engine. So we're going to look at some of the common pitfalls. It's not an in-depth guide. We're just going to go over some of the main issues that we need to think about before we do this mod to avoid any disappointment. So tuning a car is all about getting more air and more fuel into the engine so it can be burned and one of the best ways of adding more air to an engine is through a turbocharger which compresses the air that comes into the engine allowing it to carry so much more oxygen and dramatically increases the potential power on offer. So in this video we're going to look at how to add more capacity to an existing turbo engine and also some of the basics involved in adding a turbo to a naturally aspirated engine. First of all, let's look at a naturally aspirated engine. So if you've got a naturally aspirated engine, you could add a turbocharger to it. Now in the computer games, it's very easy. You just click a box and suddenly your little car has got a turbo and it's making another two, 300 brake horsepower. In the real world, it doesn't really work like that. There are very few engines that you can bolt a turbo on and they will work happily. The compression ratio of the engine needs to be right. If that compression ratio is too high, the engine will suffer from detonation and pre-ignition and you get all sorts of problems and difficulties and the car will just not run. In a lot of cases, the air flow meter cannot cope with the additional air that the turbo is pushing in and the car will either go into limp home mode or just not start at all. We get asked a lot about intercoolers, what these do for your car, whether there's much benefit to adding an uprated intercooler to your engine. The turbocharger compresses the air as it goes into the engine and it means that the air is carrying more oxygen, the air is more dense. But as a consequence of that, the temperature increases. Have you ever noticed when you pump up a car tire that the valve and the nozzle from the pump get very, very hot? Thus a byproduct of compressing the air, it generates heat. And on a turbo engine, we often see intake temperatures of around 100 degrees centigrade, which is pretty hot. So the intercooler is a way of taking that temperature down. A typical intercooler will cut that in half. So it's worth also saying that if you use an intercooler to cool that charge, you're also decreasing the pressure of the air. But don't worry about that. The turbo is still adding more power to your engine than it otherwise would. And the intercooler is just helping you to get the maximum benefit from that already compressed air. So there are two types of intercooler. There's an air to air intercooler and there's a water cooled intercooler. Now the way they work is slightly different and most manufacturers go for an air intercooler. The air intercoolers take the charge going into the engine after the turbo and they pass it through a radiator that's exposed to cold air coming into the front of the car. So it's common to see a front mounted intercooler where it gets the maximum amount of fresh cold air coming in. Some manufacturers have mounted the intercooler on the top of the engine and they've put a vent in the bonnet which helps to suck cold air directly in through the intercooler. And the advantage of that is a shorter intake path because moving that coolant to the front of the engine, whereas typically the turbocharger or the supercharger is way back in the engine, you're adding quite a lot of length to the intake. So you're gonna lose a little bit of intake pressure and add a little bit of drag in the system. So the shorter that can be, the better. And that's really where the water-cooled intercoolers come into their own because they can be sighted quite near to the engine and they take the heat away from that by means of water where it is then cooled at the front. It's a bit more complicated fitting a water-cooled intercooler. There's a pump to worry about, the coolant, and a lot more piping to think about. You do get the benefit of less of an intake pressure drop by using one. So although they're more expensive and more fiddly, they will generally give you a better result. So there's a lot of issues to be addressed if you are fitting a turbocharger. Your best bet is to source a kit where someone's done all of the research for you and they've got an ECU setup program that you can just 
drop into your ECU. And all the ancillary components that allow the turbo to be bolted onto the engine, that supply the turbo with a feed of oil to keep it well lubricated, and even fitting an intercooler to take the intake temperature back down after the turbo has done its work and compressed the air. So internal engine mods are probably the way to go to fit a turbo so you can get an opportunity to lower the compression ratio of the engine. Manufacturers have also added direct injection which is another way of avoiding the problem of ignition where the fuel is injected directly into the cylinders so the pressure buildup doesn't cause pre-ignition. If your car has already got a turbo are there any upgrade options available to you? Well yes, larger turbos. There's a, a few options open to us. The most popular and easy one to install is a hybrid turbo where a standard turbo casing is taken and the internals are stripped out and you replace them with uprated internals that can make more power. You can change the spool up characteristic or maybe raise the power band to the, the top end of the RPM range. The other option is just going with a larger turbo. If you buy this as a kit you'll often get a manifold that can just bolt onto your engine so they make it quite easy but sometimes you'll get a larger turbo and you will need to adjust the pipe work in the engine and all the connections in order to get it to fit and work properly but that is a good way to get the really big power gains but bear in mind the factory injectors and the factory fuel pump can only push out so much fuel if they do not supply enough fuel for this large amount of air coming into the engine you'll get flat spots the engine's going to throw error codes you'll get warning lights on your dash the car may even go into limp home mode and the power will be dramatically reduced. So you really do need to over specify your turbo and your injectors to make sure you've still got a little bit of leeway because as those components get older their performance will degrade and if your car is tuned and set up assuming everything is going to work at its optimum efficiency as soon as it drops a little bit you're going to have all sorts of problems. So like the manufacturers, we need to build in a little bit of slack that age and wear and tear will take up. So we really hope this has been useful to you. Please subscribe. We've got lots more in-depth articles and we're going to be doing some much more advanced stuff when it comes to car tuning. Stay tuned to Talk Cars to keep your car in peak performance. So thanks for watching. We hope this has been informative to you. Be sure to drop by our site, say hi to us in our forums.